What's going on guys? Um, this video is just going to be a bit, just a whole lot of rambling, um, I guess just to have a bit of a chat with you guys and let you know what's going on and have a bit of a back and forth and whatnot. Um, it's going to be super informal, I'm not going to edit it at all. Um, just a complete and utter rip off of Ask Jarrah's Tea Time because I like that video format, I think it's really cool and it's nice to say informal from time to time. So yeah, just going to go through a couple things and here we go. Um, 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 I quickly put out a thing just before on my Facebook page, um, asking, uh, you know, if anybody wanted me to go through any sort of thing, so I guess I'll just quickly, um, go through some of those now. Uh, initiative one, PJ, I love you, you know I love you, and that's how much I love you, and, and enough to straight up mention you in a video, <laughs> um, Congratulations on getting married. Yay! Um, zombies are cool painting. Fine cast. What is my experience and opinion of it? That's annoying. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, my experience of fine cast uh, has mostly been with the Beastmen Army commission that I did earlier in the year. Um... And I've had not really a whole lot of experience with it since then. Um, my experience with it, I've had, n I had no real issues with it. Um, all the casts that I got were all fine. There was nothing wrong with them. Um, they were a little bit thin in some places, but I n didn't really have any, you know, buggered up sculpts or you know air bubbles or anything, you know, really whack. Um, I made a mind purchase. I think it was a librarian terminator or uh, uh, yeah librarian and terminator armor um, and that had a bunch of bubbles in it but outside of that I haven't had any bad experiences with it um, I don't really notice any difference in the detail once you put down a coat of primer so really as far as I'm aware it's just more well, if it is it's just a um, superficial small amount that isn't really going to, you know, change the way that a model looks, you know, revolutionise it to the point like, wow, that just looks so much more incredible. Um, but fine cast, um, it's alright, it is what it is. It's easier to put together the metal, which I guess I should be thankful for, but outside of that, I'm not terribly fussed by it. Not a lot of people rage something hardcore about it, but I guess, you know, that's kind of their own thing. Um, he also asks, what is my opinion of the relatively new GW paints? I haven't really used them that much. Um, I haven't needed to because I've still got heaps of paints myself. But from everything that, from everyone that I've been talking to about them, um, they're really apparently they're really good. Apparently they're a solid step up from the um, old lot, um, which I guess is a positive thing. Um, I don't think I'm about to change to them solely because I'm not. I prefer dropper bottles. Um, I find them to be way more accurate. Um, when it comes to getting my paint ratios, you know, a whole lot more correct. Um, and I just like using Reaper paints. That's just me, personally. Uh, I prefer them to be a little bit thinner. This is not to say that I won't try them out. Just not terribly bothered about the fact that they've come out with a new paint line. So that's what that is. Um, Warhammer 40k 6th edition rumours. Comes out on the 23rd or, the, yeah, 23rd or 28th, which is in like a week or so from now. I think next Saturday. Which is going to be really cool, really exciting for us. There's a bunch of people down at the club who are super excited about it, um, which is awesome. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't know how much of the stuff I believe in. I'm, I always seem to end up believing the really crap rumors, but um, some of the stuff that I've seen includes um, having changing the format of the way that the different as uh, parts of the turn go. So having, um, I believe, what I saw was meant to be. Um, move, assault, then shooting, um, and what was the other one? I think the other one, yeah, I think pre-measuring is going to come into it because if it was in fantasy, there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be in 40k. Um, outside of that, I don't think, I've said this before, I don't think it's going to change or revolutionise a huge amount um, at the end of the day. It's just... Generally, Games Workshop doesn't change up their rule set too much unless they're completely like doing a massive overhaul. And I think that 5th edition was really quite a strong edition and I don't think they're about to... I, I think it would be a bit of a step backwards for them to completely revolutionise the way that um, the game works. With the exception of changing turns, I, I think it's just going to be more... I don't think it's going to be anything too extreme or too much of a switch up, but 
that's just where I'm at for it anyway. Um, and Ralph would like to know, he's known as a Night Golem Shaman, would like to know what I think of the new War Machine Horde Scops and what do I think of the new Colossals. The new Colossals are okay. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff, but I don't, I play Cricks and I'm not really a fan of the um, Kraken. I think it's a really peculiar looking sculpt. I'll chuck up some pictures on it right now. I'll actually, let's just go ahead and have a look at them. Um, the Sagnar Colossal, let's have a look see. Yeah, no, the Sagnar Colossal is alright. I mean, it's cool, it's just a big chunky bastard. Um, nothing especially that takes my fancy, but then again, that's why I've never really been a huge uh, Signar fan because I've always thought, oh, well, I don't know, there's nothing particularly special about them. And, you know, like nothing terribly striking, it's kind of really melancholy, well, not melancholy, really mediocre. So I guess that's where that is. I'm not terribly blown away or anything like that. Um, the Kador Colossal looks really weird. I, I, it fits in, which is great. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm, I'm not really a fan of it. I think it's a bit boxy, um, which you know isn't really my thing. Uh, but I guess I'm sure it'll fit in with the rest of the Kador army. Uh, the Menoth Colossal looks sick. I'm not generally a huge fan of some of the Menoth stuff, but the Menoth Colossal is fucking cool. Um, it's got some really good um, shapes to it, really nice contours. I think it looks fantastic. Um, I think it'll look really, really good. And yeah, I guess that's kind of where I'm at with the Colossals. Um, I've had a look at some of the uh, new hordes, the Gargants or something like that, uh, Gargantuans. Um, I saw the troll one and that thing looks absolutely, literally looks Gargantuan. It is, it's really, really cool and I really like the way that it, um, uh, if it comes out, uh, sorry, when it comes out, I'm sure it'll be really super, uh, but you know what I mean, you know what I mean, I can't speak for shit. Um, um, I like the new um, Epic, uh, the Epic Asphyxius, or uh, Asphyxius 3 model that's coming out. Um, what is it, As Asphyxius the Hellbringer and Vociferon, a uh, Vociferous or something like that. Uh, it's, it's a cool mini, um, I kind of feel like it's a bit of a step back solely from where they're at with uh, it like it kind of looks more of an intermediate step between well I don't know I feel like that could probably be the first asphyxius model then have E1 as number two and then have uh, epic Gatsby 2 as the final stage because I feel like his very dramatic base makes him super super awesome I also had a look at, up at some of his uh, rules that are apparently coming out and I think they've made him a hell of a lot more of a friendly caster, but I think I'm definitely going to continue to run Egas V2 because he's just a fucking badass man. That guy just rapes and pillages. It is fantastic. However, I do like that he comes with a little henchman in this sculpt, which is really cool. So that's War Machine and Hordes. What else has been going on? Um, I have been battling with myself something furious to not get sucked into the whole Warhammer fantasy side of things because I've been wanting so many different armies as of late, just looking around. Um, I love some of the new Ogre, Ogre sculpts. The uh, Firebelly is amazing. I love the, um, I think it's called the Iron Tusk or so, like that big motherfucker that um, the Lord's Ride, I'll just bring it up here. Have an image. Um, I think it looks absolutely, yeah, the Thunder Tusk, Stonehorn thing, that thing looks really, really cool. And I love the Mournfang Cavalry. I'm not generally a big fan of the Ogres themselves, but that's just because I don't really like their sculpts that much. It's not that they're bad, I'm just not really a huge fan of, I guess, Ogres. I'm not really a huge fan of their fluff, though, but some of those models have just been getting me something hardcore. And Vampire Counts, oh my god. Wow, I've just been trying so hard not to just uh, fall into that. But uh, I think it might end up happening. Which also brings me to, at my club, we've been, um, we're about to start up a Mordheim uh, league, which is really cool. Um, 
and I think that's where I'll be getting out my outlet for vampire accounts because they have got some real I can use some of the really cool character models there for different um, dudes within the warband which would be really sick super excited about that um, I'm also probably gonna pull up a uh, witch hunters uh, warband for that just because it's entertaining as crap uh, we've been having a really good time playing some of the games there. It's really a lot of fun to play. I know it's broken, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but just the narrative and cinematic quality and diving charges just makes everything so much better and so cool. So that's that. Other things that have been happening um, are I've been talking to Back to Basics, um, and we've worked out that I'm going to do a few product reviews for them. Um, I'm going to be doing a review of their um, big rack line. Um, so when that comes through, I'll be putting up a video for that, which will be really cool. It's really quite a cool system. It fits Games Workshop paints and Vallejo paints, as well as um, different tool kits or different parts of your tool system or whatever else. And it sits on your desk really nicely and looks really crisp. Um, so I'll be showing off a thing of that. Uh, the other one is Creative, or I think it's Custom Kingdoms. Yeah, Custom Kingdoms. Um, they do pre-built, pre-painted terrain. They do like um, little medieval villas and steampunk buildings and whatnot. And they do some really cool stuff because it's, you know, coming... It, it's minimum fuss stuff, you know, pre-assembled, pre-painted. Um, what more really could you ask? I mean, you know, sweet, awesome terrain, like that quick. Uh, we're also working out something with those guys. They're going to be sending out some stuff for me to do a review on. Um, and yeah, we'll show you some of that stuff. So what am I? I'm at 11 minutes. Oh, sorry, 12 minutes already. Wow, look at me go. So that's kind of what's been happening around here and what I've been looking at and thinking is super sexual. Um, 40k, I have been working on... Down here in Adelaide, we have... A, oh, sorry, in South Australia, we're having a... Um, there's apparently a thing called the Ceramite Challenge, um, where between April and next year's April on uh, Anzac Day, you have to build up an entire Space Marine chapter from scratch and have it all painted and um, I'm going to play a massive apocalypse game or something like that um, at the end of the time, which I think will be really cool. Which is why, if you've been a fan on the Ghost Channel Facebook page, you would have seen a little bit of discussion about Space Marines and a few different things. Um, I've put together a couple of drop pods, I'm starting to work out a um, colour scheme I don't know how well you can see that, if at all, barely at all, yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> um, I've been working out a colour scheme uh, for the chapter that I'm doing, as far as I'm aware, and I'll just put up an image now, um, this is the chapter colour scheme that I'm kind of going for, I think it looks amazing, everything just pops and is really super gorgeous. Um, from talking to the different guys on my channel, um, it has a lot of different aspects from a lot of different chapters um, and is not, as far as I can tell, in my opinion, it's not quite one of any of those. I feel like it's kind of a marriage of all those or just a generic, somebody's just taken a bunch of colours. So if you can identify what the chapter is, um, be sure to tell me and shoot me a link to like, I don't know, Lexicanum or whatever it is. Um, failing that, I might have to write up another, another custom Space Marine chapter a lot of fluff just to add to the countless thousands that are out there in the world but uh, you know that's what that is um damn what else has been happening wood elves I've been playing with my wood elves at the club which is awesome um they're not I'm real at first I wasn't quite sure about what people meant with them being um super underpowered or well, not underpowered but really quite a lower tier if not the bottom tier um army in Warhammer Fantasy at first, I thought, yeah, okay, they're a little bit, you know, expensive and whatnot, but I didn't quite get what they meant about it being, you know, too much. And now I see. <laughs> now I see. Um, I've had a couple... Yeah, I've had a couple victories. Um, and that's mainly been thanks to uh, inexperience of the people who I'm playing against, who don't quite understand how Wood Elves work and what it is that I need to make it all happen. Um, I did have a couple games against a Demons player and got absolutely fucking tabled in the first one. In the second game, I did pretty alright, but um, yeah, no, fantasy is pretty... With Wood Elves, it's pretty hard. <laughs> um, this is not to say that I play in an elite group, but maybe it's just that I'm shit. 
which is more than which is more than likely. Let's let's be honest. Um, but what else? I love the models. They're fantastic. I definitely think I want to keep playing them until um, the next Codex comes out. In which case, I'll definitely be going super balls to the wall with that because. Man, what else? Who doesn't like them? They're like the coolest motherfuckers around. They're like, oh, what? You know, fucking arrows everywhere. Fantastic. So that is that. Um, Bugle Call. Some of you would have seen a video that I put up a little while ago called Bugle Call. Uh, here in Adelaide, we had a uh, wargaming convention. Um, and we were kind of going... Uh, we went there and represented the club, you know, like try and get some... Um, I guess pick up some members and whatnot. The turnout was really quite poor. It was not a very well advertised event, and it, it was it definitely could have been managed and run a whole lot better than what it was. Um, we got no interest at all. There was very, very, very little uh, privateer press and games workshop. Um, well, very little privateer press apart from a single press ganger that I saw, um, and next to no games workshop support at all. Um, it was very much just a lot of historicals um, and just a bunch of old fellas playing with that. And you know, that's cool for them. Um, I was just kind of a little disappointed that there was nothing really, I guess, for what it is that we do, um, which is a bit of a shame. However, they did have Victoria Lamb and got to show some of her amazing work um, and meet her, which was really cool. So that was the thing. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, no, I've kind of, I've been absolutely swamped in with um, real life, I guess, at the moment. I've got exams and buddy, working two jobs is awesome as well. Um, and everything in between, running the club. Uh, everything in between, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Trying to get some sort of sleep and whatnot, but hey, you do what you gotta do. Um, I'm looking at getting a better airbrush, as those of you who might be aware, I have a Badger Renegade, oh, sorry, Badger US, sorry, 105 Patriot, my bad. Um, it's an okay airbrush, I don't know if it's just that I'm not using it terribly well, but it just, I've had a few troubles with it, um, just basically getting it to, um, be consistent with the amount that it's, sorry, with the area that it's spraying. It's really quite large, and I'm really only, very rarely using it. Um, so, that's a, I think the best thing that I've managed to get out of it in terms of airbrushing was this um, sanguinary priest that I did for a mate and just did the axe like that, and even then I don't really like it. Um, so, that was the thing. And, yeah, I don't think I have too much. Oh, actually, no, I remember. Somebody else on the Ghost Channel just asked a question about um, Mantic's Kings of War stuff uh, and how they've been doing the Kickstarter. I think it's fantastic. If you haven't already seen it, they're doing like a, trying to get Kings of War, their basically Warhammer Fantasy equivalent uh, out there with a Kickstarter and uh, doing a bunch of all this extra stuff. And you know what? I think it's fucking awesome. They're really giving something to the community. Um, with, well, they're really giving back to the community with this. I feel like the profits are definitely going to the right place in developing the game, and I think that having a big army game like this to directly compete with uh, Games Workshop can only do fantastic things for our, for what we do and our market. Um, and hopefully, I don't think it will for a while, but I definitely think it will take away um, some of Games Workshop's massive pile of gamers and, you know, help to build up Mantic, um, I think it's really cool, so that's a fantastic thing. Other and final thing that I want to go through, and I kind of wanted to leave this till last because it's not a very positive thing, um, I'm guilty as hell of it, so I'm kind of being, I know I'm definitely being hypocritical, but I was having a bit of a chat with some of the guys within our community and feeling like our community is starting to become more and more a commercial hub of just advertisements and money grabbing and what can you do for me and everything in between you know there's not very many there's a lot of the channels that I used to look up to and used to think were really fantastic have kind of taken a step backwards 
um, they're becoming fewer and fewer tutorials and trying to help people out and more and more about just advertising and plugging you know different things or trying to sell you shit or showing you know off their latest business venture and whatnot um, and very little about you know actual here's content you know this is how you paint this um, there are some fantastic channels who like particularly schnauzer face minis who I recently came into Oh my god, that guy just, wow, he puts out some immaculate tutorials, some fantastic painting that guy does. Some really good tutorials, it's definitely the best format that I've seen. Um, it's really a good combination of a less from awesome paint jobs format, of just, you know, having the camera there and showing you all the close-up detail and whatnot, and walking you through how to go through it, uh, walking you through how to go about doing different techniques, but he also just has some fantastic comedy or just you know funny bits and whatnot just to really mix it up in between so that you know when you're sitting there watching could say a 20 minute painting tutorial video you're not nodding off because every now and then you've just got these weird lull moments where you know you're like oh my god um and just really brings you back in and really engages you so dude shout out to schnauzer face minis that guy's got it popping so good on him um and i guess let me just say a big thank you to all the people who are continuing to put out you know just to you know just showing what they're doing, you know, hey, you know, these are the models that I painted, let me know what you think, um, who are putting out tutorials that aren't trying to plug products and whatnot, um, good on you, you're doing, you, you're making this, I feel like several years ago the community was a significantly better place than what it is now, um, everybody was helping out other people, everybody was helping out other people, and now I feel like that's happening a hell of a lot less. And I'm not going to name names because I don't want to start a shitstorm, but certain individuals who are just bumming money off others um, to try and do videos and whatnot, I think is just wrong. Because I wish that somebody had, you know, bought me a camera and bought me editing software and bought, you know, paid for me to go and do all these other different things. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. People... We do this for fun, okay? We do this because we enjoy it. We shouldn't... A lot of these people who are taking it way too seriously and way more seriously than they should, this is for fun. It shouldn't be about, you know, taking people's money, getting people's money. Just do what you can with what you got. I mean, shit, what did I record with at first? I recorded with my parents' um, little handheld camera at first, then proceeded to buy a camera that had no macro. <laughs> Used my laptop webcam, still do periodically. Upgraded to the Ipe Tech that Les from Awesome Paint Job suggested that I get a hold of. Tried to do some painting tutorials, didn't really work out with what it was that I was doing. I guess it just wasn't really that good. And now I'm onto a Samsung Q10, I believe, or Q20. Um, and it cost me a bit to set up, but you know what? I think the results really speak for themselves. And it took me a while to kind of get where I am with the camera situation, but I feel like it was absolutely worth it. And I'm glad that I got all the subscribers that I did the way that I did, um, without having to rely on, I guess, I'm glad that I got to where I am because I put the work in and made this, I guess, not really sacrifices, I mean, fuck, it's a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm just glad that I got to where I was and didn't have to, you know, I did it myself. Um, I got some help from some people along the way with with the form of particularly Canvas One, who I'm eternally grateful for, um, and people like um, Less From Awesome Paint Job, who put me on their front page and got me a bunch of subscribers um, and a bunch of my wider audience. I know a lot of you don't really follow me anymore, but that's cool. Hey, I'm at the point now where I think I get 100 to 200 views of people, whether or not they really care or are watching and whatnot. Thank you for sticking around. And if you got to 24 minutes where we're at right now, hell, high five for you because you must be really bored or you must be painting something furious and just like background noise. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, end of all that. It's been good times. Um, thank you for sitting and listening to me waffle on bullshit for the past half hour. Um, hopefully I'll put out some decent videos as of uh, sooner and whatnot. Um, don't really, can't really remember what I was talking about to sum it up, so go ahead and uh, leave comments if you remember what I've been talking about in reference to stuff, and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It's been a pleasure, I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.
If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss anything coming out on the Ghost Channel, head on over to the official Ghost Channel Facebook page and like it. You won't miss a trick and get extra updates and progress reports not shown on YouTube. What's not to love? The link is displayed and is also in the video description. You feel the clips like Pharrell. You will feel me. You will admire. My struggle. My hustle. My soul. Desire.